Happy spooky season. <laughs> Can you tell that I am feeling the time of the year just a little bit? I spent today organising my pumpkin patch, which is kind of like my my October Christmas tree, but for Halloween, and I'm loving it very much. So today I was like, it's clearly time. Now that I am back in my October foliage, it is time to start recording Halloween content. And I thought a fun thing to start with would be making a proper blood vial necklace. Now, obviously you can get blood vial jewelry that contains fake blood. This is a little earring with some fake blood in it. But for the true Halloween spookster and vampire enthusiast, the, uh, the Angelina Jolie actually blood, blood vial necklace may be your thing of choice. Um, now, there are some downsides to trying to make a, a necklace out of actual blood. Blood, when you put it in things like this, if you put it in on its own, for starters, it doesn't look this pretty colour. It doesn't look red like this it looks basically black so it's best if you water it down or put a bit of red wine in there just to give it a bit of a better color i think the thing is we are so used to seeing fake blood in movies that a lot of us don't really know what blood looks like anymore <laughs> um but even if you water it down a bit and you have it looking a good color it tends to kind of clot and turn brown and bitty and stick everywhere and just not look as pretty as fake blood does. But anyway, what I wanted to try today is something I haven't tried before, which is using aspirin as an anti-clotting agent. Um, because I think I've heard a lot about aspirin stopping blood from clotting, that aspirin, if aspirin is in your bloodstream and you cut yourself, it can make you bleed more. So I was thinking, okay, what happens if you put aspirin directly in blood? Does it stop it clotting? So I thought I would film the process, first of all, of how I make blood vial necklaces, and then I will come back to you in probably a couple of days, and we will see whether it still looks nice or whether it's gone brown and manky. <laughs> so this is a total experiment for me too. So what I have here is um, a kit that I got way back in the day, way back in about 2012 when I was wearing these things a lot. I got a kit from Vamp Fangs. I imagine they still do them, otherwise I've seen blood vial necklace kits on eBay, like a bunch of places. So what I have is I have like a base necklace which has these quite cute little bats on. Um, I don't know if you can see, quite cute little bats. And then in the middle it has this piece here which is like just a screw top for the uh, the blood vial pieces. So I've got some more here that are fang shape. I mean, you can't see very well, but they're the same shape as this. You can get other shapes. You can get little kind of blood droplets. Uh, yeah, you can get other shapes too, but I quite like the fang shape. I quite like that. Um, and what you get are some little, I think they're kind of like wax tops that kind of go in and seal it. And then um, you've got some extra tops as well, because necklaces like this, uh, if you do want to replace the blood vial on them, um, the piece is just held on with a jump ring, which you can pull apart and you can take it off and you can pop a new one on there, which is something that I did quite a lot. I used to have one of these with um, with anks in the place of bats, and that was my blood vial necklace that I was constantly wearing and refilling in 2012 when I was writing about vampires, and I really felt I should be wearing, I should be wearing a statement piece of, hey, I write about vampires. <laughs> the pretentious new novelist, yes. Um, so let's get started. So what I do when I make blood vial necklaces, um, is not to cut myself. Um, I would say if you are making something like this, to to get and gather up this much blood, a little little scratch is probably not going to give you the blood you want. And I don't think cutting yourself for the sake of jewellery is a very good idea. Um, I think it's also wise to mention at this point sanguinarian vampires. If you do not know, there are people out there who do believe they are sort of a human vampire and that drinking small amounts of blood every week or so keeps them healthy. Uh, if you are a sanguinarian vampire, I would also advise not cutting your donors. Um, cuts take a long time to heal, they scar, it's not a good idea. So what I am going to be using um, is to 
extract it directly from the vein with a fine tip insulin pin which does the minimum damage possible uh, again do not have a go at this uh, at home unless you have trained yourself well with phlebotomy uh, certainly don't go and attack someone else directly with one of these without getting good at it first um, ideally get a nurse or someone to show you but you you can as I did learn online but do do be cautious um, if you're overweight you're going to find this quite hard your veins are going to be hard to get at the thinner you are the easier it is um <laughs> i am pretty good at this due to having been an addict in the past and actually one of the reasons i got into making blood vial necklaces was as part of getting clean that it allowed me to still play with with things like this without using drugs it was kind of like a just a safer way of doing things that kind of curbed cravings so that was another reason behind my blood vial necklaces so the, the other thing you want when you're doing this you're going to want a tourniquet to make it easier to get at your veins and you are going to need a alcohol prep pad to clean the area with so uh, with that said let's get started on extracting some vital fluids this could be fun today because I've eaten a lot of uh, dark chocolate and my hand is doing that involuntarily so <laughs> this is going to be interesting good luck I cross my fingers let's see how this goes <laughs> Okay, so I don't think I managed to quite get the camera angle to give you the really gory experience there, but we have succeeded in extracting a goodly amount of blood. Um, as you can see, there is really no damage done besides one tiny little red dot and a bit of redness just from putting pressure on it, which is very important if you don't want to leave bruises, you want to put pressure on. Um, that's generally why you get bruises from blood tests is that when they say put pressure on you only do it for about two seconds and then they put the band-aid on and they shove you out of the door when really you want to be holding pressure on it for a good minute or so. Also they use larger gauge uh, needles for blood tests so you get more of a rip in your vein and you bleed more whereas something like this you shouldn't end up with bruises if you put pressure on it and you're good at what you do. Um, so as you can see as I say Blood doesn't look like blood. This is the thing, particularly when the blood is deoxygenated, i.e. taken straight from a vein. Um, oxygen meeting blood is what makes it red. So the first thing to do is to draw some air into your syringe. And as you can see, it starts to turn a more red color as the oxygen gets to it. So kind of move it around a little bit in the oxygen if you're squeamish you're not gonna like this video but i'm not quite sure why you would have clicked on it in the first place but you can see the texture the consistency is very different from what i have in my little fake blood vial that this this kind of leaves a red stain behind um and it moves very easily this actually as you can see it doesn't leave that cool kind of red staining particularly um and uh, it just sort of it sticks quite hard it's quite thick only temporarily does it leave the red staining but for a while it looks very beautiful and very bloody so without further ado let's get the aspirin going okay so i've got some water and my dispersible aspirin tablet melting away here 
I did want to mix some water with the blood anyway to just give it a prettier colour. So there we go, my dispersible aspirin is going to make this cloudy stuff, unfortunately it seems like. I thought it was going to go clear, I've never used dispersible aspirin, I would much rather swallow a pill than drink like filth that tastes like chemicals. Um, but anyway, let's draw up a little bit of this stuff into the syringe and just see what happens. Okay, so I've got a little bit of it in there and you can see the blood is getting thinner, um, it's getting redder um, and it's getting more watery because there's water in there and hopefully this is also the effects of the aspirin being an anticoagulant. That's the word I was looking for, anticoagulant. Um, so that is now running in a more pleasing way. I think it needs a little bit more. So there's a, a nice a nice gore shot for you. There we go. Let's um, <laughs> let's give it some more aspirin. This is the thing. The thing I found honestly is that real blood is very dark and very thick and you can't really go too far with mixing it with water or red wine. As I say, I, I used red wine in my early experiments because of reading in Poppy Zebrite books that um, the alcohol stopped blood clotting in lost souls. The vampires put their blood in with bottles of wine because alcohol is also an anticoagulant, which is something I can speak to when I was an alcoholic um, and I would fall over. I would get the most unbelievable bruises. I'll find a picture and give you that. These are the kind of bruises you get if you're an alcoholic and you fall over because alcohol stops your blood clotting, you hurt yourself, you bleed under the skin like crazy. So I tried using red wine um, to stop blood clotting, but it doesn't. It just, it just makes it clot in little horrible little dark flakes instead. So let's see whether aspirin is better. It is starting to flow on its own without me necessarily having to tap it. Um, you can see here, can you see this bubble moving up here? It's flowing a lot easier. So I feel like we're nearly there um, in terms of aspirin to blood ratio. So let's just go for a little bit more. So I had about half a mil of blood and I've added about two or three units of aspirin water um, to that and it's it's looking quite flowy. So okay, let's grab one of my one of my little doodars and my wax piece. The difficult thing with these is that um, although it's a screw top, it doesn't actually screw in. There are no screw pieces on the top of the vial. You have to glue it in. Um, so I generally use good old Yoohoo, um, which is messy <laughs> and it's not perfect and I have had blood vials just fall out sometimes, um, which uh, is, is not great, but um, is less messy with uh, real blood than with fake blood because it doesn't actually stain as badly. Real blood does not stain as badly in my opinion as fake blood does because it's just stickier. Have you ever seen in TV shows and movies, sorry this is this is a tangent but I, I think if you're in this video you're, you're probably a bit of a a bit of a blood obsessive like me. Um, have you ever seen in, in TV and movies bits when they get blood on their hands and like they're they're rinsing them off in the sink and it just it sticks and it doesn't come off and it gets everywhere and anyone who's who's ever done experiments with actual blood, you know that's that's not how it works. The worst scene I've ever seen for this is in the Vampire Diaries, not long after Elena gets turned, when they're in the church, there's a vampire hunter around, she gets blood all over her somewhere and she's in the sink trying to rub it away, and this blood, it's as she's rinsing it away, it's you can tell it's red paint, and it's it's just it's sticking to the ceramic on the sink. It's it's like what are you doing? This is not blood. This is not how blood behaves. I know it, you know, oh, panic, 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 the blood won't wash away, but it doesn't make sense. It's very irksome. So anyway, okay, before I can waffle too much, uh, let's get this in. This is actually looking a very lovely colour now compared to how dark it was before. It's now looking very nice and red, which I think is, is beautiful. So here we go. Um, this, I guess, again, is the, the beauty of collecting with a syringe is that you can squirt it neatly in um, and decide how much you want. Uh, so I'm having to go quite slowly for it to trickle down into the tip, which it's actually not doing. It's actually not wanting to trickle down into the very tip of this thing. Can we tap it and get it to go down? I can't get the 
needle any further down than that and I don't really want this huge air bubble at the bottom but that might have to be the way it goes. Okay so I'm going to fill it as high as I can fill it um, which is ooh, hard to show you to about there I've filled it um, but you can see there's still this annoying empty bit at the bottom which doesn't want to fill and if I had have thought about this in advance I might have put water in there that it could have mixed into uh, but let's just let's just keep rocking so then you have these I showed you before but there are little triangular wax plugs that go in the top and provide a bit of a seal uh, maybe they're plastic I don't know what they are but they do provide a pretty good seal and then I have my necklace to stick the thing into so I'm now going to take my notoriously messy yoohoo squirt it into the cap and then plop it on the vial and obviously it's going to take a while to dry that is stuck in so as I say it's going to take some time to dry so I'm being careful with it for the moment before it sets but there we have my little bats with my little blood vial yay there's a layer of lighter red at the bottom which is starting to dribble down into the bottom point so this is interesting whether it will separate due to the aspirin and water content so okay i think i'm gonna leave that to set and i will return to you i guess tomorrow and we will see how it's looking then um and then we will see how it's looking the day after that because in my experience if we can make it to 48 to 72 hours um and still be having this nice pretty red tint and still be not looking clotted and gross uh, i think that will be a win there is still quite a bit of blood left i could make another one if i so chose um, if I hadn't put aspirin in this I would probably drink it because that's what I do <laughs> when I extract blood from myself, why not? It's, it's interesting to perform when I was starting out writing about vampires I did do other experiments with blood cocktails and just like what does it taste like if you put it with wine if you put it with whiskey what happens and there are lots of, of interesting things I learned like if you put blood into a shot of whiskey um, it doesn't just flow in and mix it actually sinks to the bottom blood is quite a thick liquid it sinks in this swirling ruby cloud to the bottom of the whiskey and it looks very cool and you have to stir it up to make it look pretty and it, then it's like cherry red for a little while and then if you leave it too long it it clots in little bits and it sinks and then you have all these horrible brown bits at the bottom of your whiskey and it i wouldn't drink it at that point <laughs> um so that's that's what happens but uh this is uh is really no good to me with aspirin in i don't think it's going to taste very nice with aspirin in it so uh that i will be responsibly disposing of in a biohazard box which you get from the needle exchange whenever you get needles uh so there, there are no biohazard issues with this blood not that i have any bloodborne illnesses i have been tested um and again if, if you are a sanguinarian vampire and that is why you are into all of this please do get your donors tested um and honestly even if you are just going to be making a blood vial necklace with a loved one or something and you're going to be playing with their blood you should both get tested beforehand because accidents can happen if you've got sharp things and blood going around so do practice safe vampirism this halloween please <laughs> so um god i've made a bit of a splat a bit of a blood splat and a glue splat down here it's uh, it's been a messy crafting session we've got some blood splats going on down here on my post-it notes um, <laughs> and I will take some pictures comparing the artificial to the real to, to put up now and um, and I will see you tomorrow and the next day and we'll see how it's looking so bye for now <laughs> okay so it has been about 12 hours so far and I just wanted to capture this while it's looking so beautiful check that out I think you can see where the water and the aspirin is there's this really kind of watered down ruby piece at the bottom with it fading up into deeper red 
So comparing it to the fake blood vial necklace, you can see like this, this kind of blobbing on the side looks very fake to me. Maybe it's just because I've played with blood vial necklaces so much, but I can immediately tell that's fake by how much that stains the walls. Um, and also by the lack of thickness and opacity, you can see that the real one is very, very thick. You can't see through it. It's very opaque. Um, and that really gives away real blood for me. Um, but it's looking really quite cute at the moment. Fingers crossed that maybe aspirin is the trick. And panning in from the ridiculously photogenic rose on my windowsill, it has now been two days and it's still looking good. So again, the comparison with the fake one and the real one, the real one is still a lovely red colour. I really love the gradient of colour, that you've got the really opaque, sort of bloody looking thick bit, but then you've got this hint of glorious, really bright crimson at the bottom. I think that's actually like a lot prettier than that one. So yes, I guess it's really what you go for, whether you fill it up with fake blood, or whether you fill it up with real blood and aspirin, is purely an aesthetic choice as to whether you like this staining that it does, on the thing and whether you like it to be quite free flowing though if you went for one of the other shaped vials the little kind of like heart shaped ones or something um then uh, you're probably going to get it flowing around a little bit more but uh so there's there's your aesthetic choice but i think i think i've finally created a blood vial recipe that works so i'm very chuffed and uh i don't know whether i'll take this one off and turn it into an earring because blood vial earrings i do wear more often and it is quite easy to just make an earring, just get a, a set of little earring clips and uh, kind of thread them on. So I might do that with that one and turn it into an earring. And then I will have a pair, one real and one fake, which will <laughs> be an interesting conversation starter, I guess. If anyone wants to compare, hey, here's the fake one, here's the real one. And then I can have my <laughs> my massive rant about about bad fake blood uh scenes on movies when um when the blood that they're trying to wash off is, is doing this and is staining everything in sight which as you could see real blood does not do so uh there we go but anyway i hope this video was helpful so uh if you end up making a blood vial necklace or anything like that maybe tell me about it um or if you have any other tips for things that stop them clotting uh let me know but uh anyway i'm very pleased with that it's so pretty so over and out bye bye <laughs>